Well, good afternoon. Yesterday marked the 10th anniversary of my swearing in as Milwaukee's 18th police chief. Little did I realize then that I would become the fifth longest serving chief in the Milwaukee Police Department's 162 year history and the first since the institution of terms to be reappointed. In fact, of the 79 American and Canadian members of the Major City Chiefs Association, only three have longer terms in their current police chief or uh, the, uh, police chief position. Now, I became a police officer nearly 47 years ago. I've been a witness to and a participant in the stark changes in policing. Becoming chief in Milwaukee was the fulfillment of a career dream. I promised the residents of this city when I was first sworn in that I will not let you down. I've done my professional best to fulfill that promise. The report I share with you today, which you have, will serve to document my tenure. These years have been characterized by dramatic changes to the Milwaukee Police Department. This report, for the first time, <coughs> presents those changes in one place. It isn't meant to be an exhaustive history of the MPD during these 10 years. Those major incidents that are recounted are presented as representative of work of the MPD or they resulted in operational or training improvements. Primarily, it focuses on the implementation, management, and institutionalization of change. Now, I was brought here to be a change agent, and a change agent I have been. Change is hard. It inevitably engenders resistance and controversy no matter how necessary or desired. In the world of policing, it is far safer to fail conventionally than it is to innovate. Ironically, in my experience, demands for change and the ensuing and the, and, uh, excuse me, demands to change and the ensuing reforms often years later result in demands for reforms of the reforms. Yesterday's uh, uh, innovation becomes today's status quo. It's, it seems as the winds of the winds that blow through the political environment are ever changing. But the important point is this. The Milwaukee Police Department has achieved a level of e excellence acknowledged by federal agencies, academic partners, and peer departments, as documented by the numerous awards and the recognition it has received. It has had a dramatic impact on crime while retaining broad grassroots support. Citizen complaints and uses of force are at all-time lows. By any objective standard, it is a model agency. First, let me share with you some good news about our 2017 numbers that's contained in your information packet. As you will see, total crime declined 4%. Significantly, homicide decreased by 16%. Now, we had two very tough years for homicide in 2015 and 2016. The decrease is encouraging. For perspective, Keep in mind that the 20-year average for homicide in Milwaukee was 126. During the past 10 years, that average has been reduced to 102. Still too high, but long-term progress has been made. In 2017, robbery declined 11% and was the lowest in 11 years. Citywide carjackings decreased 12%, while auto thefts declined 12%. The 6% decrease in burglaries meant that 2017 was the second lowest year in burglaries since 2007. The 4% decline in thefts made 2017 the lowest year in theft since 2007. Meanwhile, our hardworking officers took 2,759 guns off the street, the most this decade, and the proportion of firearms seized as evidence, guns was the highest we've recorded. Now the Milwaukee Police Department's core values of courage, competence, integrity, leadership, respect and restraint are demonstrated every day on the streets of our city. Two good measures of competence and restraint are uses of force and citizen complaints. Use of force has declined 25% since 2013. Meanwhile, citizen complaints were at 114 
a 77% decline since 2007, and the lowest number we have in available records. I'm immensely proud of the work of the men and women of the Milwaukee Police Department. Over the past 10 years, they have absorbed an enormous amount of technological, operational, and institutional change against the backdrop of significant political and societal pressure. It is the members of this organization who have planned, organized, staffed, and in good faith implemented and adapted to these changes. It is remarkable to me that one-third of our officers have been hired these past 10 years. To them, change is the status quo, but our veterans know how far we have come. Now allow me to mention some of the innovations that they have made successful. The implementation of our community-oriented, uh, excuse me, community-based, problem-oriented, data-driven strategy, ComStat, the realignment of police district lines to reflect historic neighborhood boundaries, the creation of the Office of Management and Planning, the creation of the Intelligence Fusion Center with the Gun Crime Intelligence Center incorporated within it, the creation of the Neighborhood Task Force and the reopening of the old District 3, the early intervention program, the training of over 400 officers as crime scene technicians, the development of the crisis intervention team and the extension of its training to all first responders, ShotSpotter, Star Chase, the homeless outreach team, the expansion and use of the major incident response team for national deployments as well as for use in the restrained policing of many Milwaukee demonstrations and disturbances becoming the first major city in the United States to successfully implement an encrypted, interoperable digital radio system, department-wide training in fair and impartial policing, creation of a risk management bureau, achieving accreditation for the Wisconsin Law Enforcement Accreditation Group, the creation of the Salvation Army Chaplaincy Program, the creation of the Police Ambassador Program, the successful partnership with the Sojourner Peace Center that has become a national model, the implementation of a body-worn camera program throughout the department, successful participation in the Bureau of Justice Assistance's National Public Safety Partnership, and emergence as the national leader in implementing that approach. These are just some of the accomplishments of the members of this department in the past few years. Their work has resulted in MPD receiving national awards from the International Association of Chiefs of Police, the Police Executive Research Forum, the MetLife Foundation, the International Association of Crime Analysts, and recognition from Cambridge University, George Mason University, and the University of Wisconsin right here in Milwaukee. I'm proudest of the creation of a Merit Awards Program to recognize and honor the exemplary service of our members. Some of you here today have attended our ceremonies where families get to see their loved ones properly recognized for their service. To date, I've had the privilege of awarding over 1,600 medals for heroism and service. Ten years. A lot has happened. Much has been accomplished. Much has been achieved. It's a good benchmark. And it's time. Time to say thank you. Time to say goodbye. When I accepted appointment to a third term, I never committed to serving a full four years. My goal for us was to turn around the homicide numbers that had climbed so high in my eighth year and to reach 10 years moving forward in the right direction. Both goals have been met. So it is today that I announce my retirement as Chief of the Milwaukee Police Department. It has been a privilege to serve this great city. It has been the pinnacle of my professional life. While many are deserving of my thanks, appreciation I will seek to demonstrate in the coming few weeks. I particularly want to thank the former fire and police commissioners who appointed me back in 08. Leonard Subcheck, Earl Buford, Richard Cox, Ernesto Baca, and Woody Welsh. I will always be grateful for their confidence. I also thank Mayor Tom Barrett, as it was his appointees who comprised that board, and his political courage was necessary, a very necessary ingredient of that decision. In the ensuing 10 years, we have weathered many storms, endured many controversies. He has never failed me, and more importantly, he has never failed this city. I have been grateful for his confidence and appreciative 
of his never having allowed politics to interfere in the proper functioning and good order of this department. Put plainly, he has let me do my job. Now, I've been privileged to be the leader of this fine agency and proud of my role in its evolution. But the credits for its accomplishments belong to its members, officers and civilians, who have made everything possible. The men and women of the Milwaukee Police Department deserve the respect and support of the people they protect and serve because they have earned it. This city should be proud of its sons and daughters and proud that it raised men and women, noble in spirit, animated by a desire to serve. I thank them and I thank you. It was 10 years ago that we took a gamble. We took a gamble with this outsider from the East Coast. And the question then was, well, is he going to stay? Is he going to stay or is he just going to travel through this city? Well, we know for the last 10 years, Chief Edward Flynn has given his all for the people of this community. The men and women who work for this department do a phenomenal job. And I give my heartfelt thanks to every single member of this department. I want people today to recognize the leadership that this department has had for the past 10 years. 10 years is an eternity as a police chief in a major American city. As the chief indicated, it simply doesn't happen anymore. But it happened here. It happened here because he's professional, he's innovative, and he cares about the residents of this community. I thank you, Chief, for your 10 years of service. I thank you for your over four decades of service to people in this country. You have earned this recognition. You have earned the right to retire. And I wish your wife and family the best as you return home. I know it's going to be a change for him because he's a man who's on the go a lot. It's going to be different watching Wheel of Fortune than being out on the streets of the city of Milwaukee. It's going to be different and more fun probably playing with his grandchildren than traveling throughout this country and this community on behalf of his professional work. I'm grateful that he made the decision 10 years ago to be part of our community. I am grateful that he has stayed for the past 10 years. I am grateful for the incredibly innovative changes that have occurred in this police department. Chief Edward Flynn has brought the Milwaukee Police Department into this center. It is data-driven. It is professional. It is well-regarded. And we all know that this is a difficult challenge. One of the things that I have said throughout my time as mayor is I want this, I need this to be a city where our residents can work with and respect our police officers. I also need this to be a city where our police officers, from the newest recruits to the police of chief, the chief of police, will respect and work with our residents. That leadership has come from the top. His willingness to work with community groups, the monthly meetings at the district stations, where our residents can come in and have a chance to talk with the police in each district about what's, what the challenges are. Those are important changes. Those are marks of a police department that wants to be and is engaged in our community. And we know that there are challenges moving forward. And we look forward to addressing those challenges. But today is Chief Flynn's day. And I want to thank you again on behalf of the residents of this city for 10 years of honorable service to the people of Milwaukee. Thank you, Thank you.